Most people in life are looking at how to make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I begin every audio cast like this, I'm usually reminding not the people who are fully filthy rich, but I'm reminding the people who are sticking themselves into the ditch to plan better, to strive higher, and to make a change in their life today. Making changes is pretty simple. It's about getting yourself into a suitcase, packing up what you need for five days, and literally making a change. How hard is that? How hard is it to give someone a hug who needs it, who wants it, who you ask permission to give it is important, but also who? how hard is it to reject one? Hard sometimes. But sometimes we do that to protect people's lives from the people who are observing, the people who are watching, the people who don't understand who we are because they've never in their life experienced someone who's like you. You see, the Lord God above has made everyone unique. Everyone has a unique thumbprint. Everyone has a unique, well, life force. Everyone has a unique opportunity to become everything that God has planned for them to be. The challenge usually occurs when we start to get social, when we start to make our social networks in junior high and high school, and if we go on to some sort of post-high school education, that also determines where we end up in our vocation. When we talk about things that are important in the world, we recognize that most people have the same fundamental things that are important to them. The simple aspect of the three S's I've discussed before, but it's basically shelter, sustenance, and service. Meaning most people need to live in a sheltered space. In other words, something that keeps them out of the winter snow out of, and the sleet out of the ice and out of the freeze and some place to keep them out of the heat in the summer and in the fall and out of the winds that can blow us all out to bits. But at the same time they need sustenance and sustenance of course is a part of that hierarchy of needs from Maslow that we know about that says we all need to eat, sleep and poop and that's the truth. But sustenance is the kind of food that works the best for your cellular health and you. Service of course is that thing that we need from people in order to produce ourselves into a better life and a better lifestyle and produce ourselves better, well, spouses and better players and better wives. But the reality is service is also something we need to give to others in order to sustain our life, in order to earn an income, in order to build a business, in order to, well, develop wealth. In life, we have moments of time to talk about controversial issues, and there's several right now on the political hot topic station that we need to think about. The first, of course, is climate change, and climate change impacts what? Of course, weather, of course, elements, of course, things around the world, such as ice melting and other things. And we've all seen that Jake Gyllenhaal film where basically the world was at an end, the cities were burning up, the ocean was rising, and everybody basically drowned in the end. Not great, but it is sort of a fatalistic look at what can happen if we don't start paying attention to our climate. But more important in the climate race is the attitude that what we produce in the world, what we produce in America, tends to feed the world. So we have to have our honeybees in order to pollinate flowers and to keep things growing, you see. Otherwise, we're going to be listening to people complain about eating manna all day long, which is basically, can you imagine, what the Bible Times had to eat for 800-some years. My understanding it wasn't the most appealing thing in the world. But the reality is, in life, we have moments of time to make a joke, and we have moments of time to speak the truth. And the truth is, we have to have those three things to basically survive. Outside of that, there are several T's of transformation, which I'll talk about in another video. I'm just going to be a tease for now. But the re ultimate reality is we must have telecommunications tools and we must have transportation in order to develop a true vocation. Because what does everybody, employer and recorder, recorders who are in their 20 years, they literally ask us, do you have reliable transportation? Well, I did until police stole it from me, which puts us on the topic of defund the police. I believe wholeheartedly that we have a full-on military that governs our and protects our air and our waterways and our, well, sky, if you will, and our days. I might not say that exactly right because I'm not in the mode to think about a song that my sister just wrote right, but the reality is the honor of America is in the fact that we are free. And we are free because a lot of soldiers, a lot of people who are throughout history and heritage have died for you and me, both domestically and abroad to get rid of slavery, slavery at home, but also to develop a way that we don't become slaves to the rest of the world abroad. In life there are dictators, in life there are America haters, in life there are people 
who call themselves Minutemen, who are ready to develop and re ready to develop themselves, but ready to defend our lands. We can go back to that 80s film with Patrick Swayze, the late Patrick Swayze, called Red Dawn, I believe it was, which was sort of a fascinating way in which the Russians came in through Canada and started to, well, um, throng upon us. But that's not the point of my story. The point of my story is that war is always at bay in American culture. The war at home is difficult because it is a race war. It is a race war where people can claim, and like I saw in a recent article, I couldn't believe it, that allegedly politi politically incorrect was stated by our president about how people were becoming more white supremacists. That is only because possibly black supremacy is reigning to a point in the world. And what I mean by that is there's a por portion of young black professionals, and I say that loosely, who feel entitled to something instead of earning something, and feel entitled to insult people with their jive turkey um, belligerence and their difficult language of the F-bomb being dropped every two seconds, but openly I sort of do that too in order to get your attention. The difference I'm not making a scene in the middle of the streets with my children, I'm not producing difficulties with other people by trying to plot, steal, and cheat them out of the things that they purchase at a possibly more color-oriented store, but people have the right to choose what they're going to wear today. Now, when we move into more issues of controversy, we can talk about sexuality today, and I still don't get why we do that today. Sexuality and intimacy is a very, 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 very extremely private thing. So why the motherfuck are we talking about it in the political ring? I don't get that. Who you play with, who you lay with, who you stay with is your personal business. If you choose to involve other people, your neighbors, your friends, your family in that part of your life because you decided to produce a husband or you decided to produce a wife or you decided to get married or whatnot, that is a part of life. But anyone beyond that circle of influence, that sphere of important people, don't have a right to say one fucking thing, my dear, about your life. Also, a part of the controversial inset is this concept of the GBLT, or whatever I get the letters wrong, and Q, whatever the hell that is, community, and why don't we just throw an A in there for asexuality, which I don't get at all, but the reality is I'm trying to make not fun, but talk about it all. That in life, we have to get over the fact that a person's genitalia is none of your fucking business. So why the motherfuck are we still talking about people with the T? This little shit boy, Elliot, who got this little vid interview when he looked like a PNZS girl with Oprah pisses me off. Doesn't he piss off you? Because the reality is, if you're a man, you go into that stand and you become that person. If you're truly that gender, then go ahead and be it, but stop fucking talking about what you were in the past. Stop trying to show me your genitalia by saying, I'm a T. Why the fuck are you doing that in front of me? The only people who deserve to know that are basically three people. Can I be clear? Outside of your birth family, who will hold it over your fucking head for the rest of your life and make you literally in strife, what I'm saying is that the only three people who have a right to know is your doctor, who provides you that hormonal balance to get your life together, your lover, who decides to literally lay with you, stay with you, and play with you, we would presume, in a healthy relationship for you, and literally your undertaker, or whoever is going to handle your cremation or whatever the hell is going to happen to you in your demise. Those are the three people outside of your horrible birth family that have a right to know any of that fucking shit about your life. Everyone else does not get the right to know that you might or might not have something downstairs or upstairs that doesn't belong. Do you understand? People who have special birth defects don't usually parade it around too much longer once they've gotten that situation handled. So I don't get them. What I hear about are these actresses in Hollywood and I'm like, that's a woman, what's the problem? Why are we still talking about this? Why are we still worried about whether or not they've got packages or no packages? I don't get that. What I see is a beautiful woman who's making a very good success of her life. What the fuck is wrong with you? And what I mean is, poo-poo on you. Do I walk into your home and demand to see your genitals? No, I don't. And does anyone else have the right to do that to you? No, they don't. Do people have the right to try to teach people lessons about their bodies, which isn't their right to do? No, they don't. Do people have the right to unclothe you after drugging you and shave your body? They don't. And let me tell you, motherfucker, I know people who've done that, and they're immoral. They're going to hell, and they will literally end up in jail, which is a version of hell. So let's talk clearly about defunding the police, because when I was there, it was a total joke. Not only did the lady judge fuck my life, lie about her rights to piss all over my life, and ruin my life with the help of someone pretending to allegedly be a part of my family. And I sat there, and I asked that fucking lawyer of mine, that free bono lawyer, bitch of mine who wanted to be called they, there, and whatnot, or whatever the fuck she was, it was a Mexican woman, ah, that's it, 
And basically, I said, who the hell is in this courtroom alleging to be family? Because my family is living overseas. My Japanese late wife was overseas at the time, and so was my son at the time. So who the fuck was trying to represent me or represent a family that is not lawfully my family anymore? Now, I can be angry about that because it cost me three months in solitary. Three months of solitary, three months of hell, three months of listening to little boys in their 20-year-old attitudes literally have sexual harassment all day long for eight hours non-stop. Now, if we want to talk about controversy, then we talk about the fact that I was supposed to be allowed a book that I had just purchased, 15 bucks worth, 20 bucks worth, on my version of religion. I was supposed to allow my journal so that I could call people, but I wasn't allowed and locked out of the phone all the time. Total human rights violation, total jail violations, and totally ridiculous, to the point that when I left jail, I didn't get one fucking thing back from the two personal bags that I literally had put, allegedly, in their locked up room. So please don't ever fucking talk to me about respecting you if you're driving around a fucking car with a blue line a bastardizing the American flag. The police are not the people who hold America uh, to the line. Their blue line and this red line shit that the firemen try to do too pisses me off. Doesn't it piss you off? They're taking an American heritage flag based on incredible, incredible sacrifice, history and heritage. And they're basically saying that they are the holders of life. They are not. They're causing most Americans a hell of a lot of strife. They have no social skills. They have no adaptability skills. They can barely get themselves out of the military, let alone into the police department. And half of them couldn't run down a perp if their life depended on it. Now let's be clear. It's easy to walk around and, and wave a, a taser around as if it's cool, as I heard a little black 20-year-old girl saying to another officer in jail. I got to tell you somebody today. And I just thought there and sat there and thought, wow. These are the people who put a blue line across the flag. Now, I learned something earlier this week that made me a lot feel a lot better about the, how the flag is supposed to be displayed on a uniform. And I thought it was backwards, but that's because we've sort of changed our stance on how the flag is supposed to look when it's on a uniform. And I'm okay with it. I still don't like the way that they hang it sometimes, but that's the way that because we learn how what we live. My whole life it was found a certain way, and now I'm looking at this going, what the heck, how do we save the day? But the point is I'm talking about controversial issues in a way that might make you ill, might make you laugh, might make you pissed off, but here's the bottom line. When it comes to human sexuality, when it comes to genitalia privacy, that is 100% the truth. It is private. Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, go display yourself all over the fucking place. So let's get off these letters. Let's let people have their rights. Because, motherfuckers, this was established in an international declaration of human rights treaty. And I am so fucking sick of saying this that I can't fucking believe that there are people in Georgia, there are people wherever the fuck they are in Ohio, who think they have the right to not only tell some woman what she can and can't do with her reproductive organs, but they're literally trying to tell other people what they can and can't do with their own human bodies to make them whole in their hearts, minds, and souls. Who the fuck are you, stranger, to try and tell me what I can and can't do with my body without your fucking consent? I don't walk into your house and tell you how to fuck your wife. And I'm being pretty fucking clear on that. And my guess is I probably do it better than you do. Because look at you. You're overweight. You've not taken care of your house of the Lord in any way. And I used to be like you. I used to have 18 additional weight inches, probably 16 at least, on my waist. Because I had a wife who knew how to cook. And I openly was doing okay. And that's what happens to people. But I've changed my whole stance because of two women in my life, and it's none of your fucking business how I feel about them. But my reality is not your reality. And your concept of my life is not your opinion. It is your opinion. But you don't have the right to render it. You're not in my life. So let's be clear. When we talk about controversial issues, you better be prepared not to defend your life, but to decide whether or not it's your right to comment at all. Because how we handle people is how we're going to get handled. So if you want to commandeer someone's body, then I hope they do that to you.